Hi everybody and yay we made it to 2021. Whew, that was rough. I'm Renee Meredith, the COO of Exploration Group, and welcome to the audio version of our first new letter of the new year for the date of January 8th, 2021 with my shout out to Heidi So and Jules Ramos, who always works so hard on our newsletter every week. And now, the news. The Mechanical Licensing Collective begins full operations as envisioned by the Music Modernization Act of 2018. The license availability date set by the landmark Music Modernization Act of 2018 has officially arrived. Digital audio services can begin operating under a new blanket mechanical license covering every musical work available on their U.S. services. The Mechanical Licensing Collective will begin administering this new blanket license established by the MMA. Services operating under the blanket license will be required to send monthly usage reports and mechanical royalty payments to the MLC. The MLC will then match the usage activity to the appropriate musical works owners using the data in the MLC's new musical works database and distribute the royalties it has received to music publishers, musical works administrators, and self-administered songwriters, composers, and lyricists. The MLC anticipates sending out its first royalty payments and statements in April of 2021. The Public Musical Works database can now be accessed via the public search button on the MLC's homepage. In addition, the MLC will launch its Bulk Data Access Subscription Program, allowing subscribers to download a set of files containing all of the musical works ownership data in the MLC's database. Report shows music streaming set new record in 2020 with 17% U.S. increase led by huge little baby tally. According to a report released by MRC Data, music streaming in the year 2020 set a streaming record in America, increasing 17% for the year to end with an unprecedented 872.6 billion streams. Lil Baby, whose My Turn album released in late February, ended the year with a total of 3.9 billion on-demand streams for its tracks. The study further showed that the streaming uptick was even greater globally than it was domestically. International audio on-demand streaming was up 22.6% in 2020. In the U.S., the year's most consumed song was Roddy Rich's The Box, with 1.3 billion streams and 1.7 billion audience impressions at radio. Internationally, the biggest track of the year was WAP by Cardi B featuring Megan Thee Stallion. Global song sales, on the other hand, were down 19.2%, and the decline was even harsher in the U.S., with a decline of 22.3%, from 301 million tracks sold to 234 million. In terms of genres, R&B hip-hop was on top with 28.2% of overall volume, followed by rock with 19.5%, pop with 12.9%, country with 7.9%, Latin with 4.7%, dance electronic with 3.2%, and Christian gospel with 1.9%. Sirius XM warns of $1 billion impairment charge for Pandora. Sirius XM says it expects to record a $1 billion non-cash impairment charge for its Pandora music streaming service, due mainly to the impact of per-play royalty payment costs. The uncertainty we have this year and the potential for higher royalty costs will likely drive lower margins and have a meaningful impact on Pandora's profitability over the coming years, and this drives the bulk of the expected impairment, said Julie Witt's newly installed CEO of the audio entertainment giant. Besides statutory royalty rates for artists, Pandora has direct licensing deals with major label groups. And Wits said a recent fall in ad revenue for Pandora amid the pandemic was accompanied by consistent consumption of its music streaming product, which will hit profitability as the overall royalty cost structure for the music streaming service rises. The Sirius XM boss also pointed to increased competition from music streaming rivals like Spotify and Apple Music, which has reduced revenues from ad-supported Pandora listeners. SiriusXM also added 909,000 net self-pay subscribers to finish 2020, with around 30.9 million self-pay subscribers. This exceeded the company's most recent 2020 subscriber guidance. Warner Music Group inks licensing deal with TikTok. Warner Music Group has signed a licensing deal with TikTok. The news marked the viral video platform's second major label license deal in as many months. 
after it was announced at the beginning of November that it had struck a deal with Sony Music Entertainment. As first reported by Bloomberg, TikTok's latest licensing agreement covers songs from WMG's publishing division Warner Chapel Music in addition to WMG's recorded music catalog. The deal also follows the news at the end of November that TikTok has agreed a multi-year licensing deal with pan-European licensing hub ICE for the musical works represented by the ICE Core. Music streaming in the UK increased 8.2% in lockdown 2020, but not one album went platinum. Though music streaming in the UK increased by 8.2% in lockdown 2020, according to a new year-end report from the British phonographic industry, not one album went platinum. The year-over-year boost to music streaming in the UK helped 2020 become the sixth consecutive year in which music consumption has grown. In total, fans streamed or purchased approximately 155 million albums throughout the year, while individual streams hiked more than 20% compared to 2019 to finish at 139 billion. Streaming also accounted for 80.6% of all UK music consumption in 2020. Louis Capaldi's Divinely Uninspired to a Hellish Extent topped the list of most popular albums, followed by Harry Styles' Fine Line, Dua Lipa's Future Nostalgia, Billie Eilish's When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go, and Stormzy's Heavy Is The Head. Report claims spending on apps grew by 30% to $111 billion in 2020. In an analysis of 2020's apps spending by customers of the iOS App Store and Android's Google Play, app analytics firm Sensor Tower stated consumers spent nearly $111 billion globally on in-app purchases, subscriptions, and premium apps across both marketplaces. This figure represents 30.2% year-over-year growth from 2019 when app stores generated $85.2 billion. Apple Store accounted for 65% of the total in 2020, around the same as previous years. And TikTok alone generated $1.2 billion of App Store spending in 2020. That's in-app purchases by users, since the app is free to download and use. The company also cites a new record for first-time installs of apps in 2020, as in not re-downloads of apps people already own. This was up 23.7% to nearly 143 billion installs last year. And from our random ramblings section this week, You Discover Music has a fascinating article by Martin Chilton on music and the silver screen. He talks about the first feature-length talkie was The Jazz Singer, released in 1927, but did you know it wasn't until Jolson's second film in 1928, The Singing Fool, that talking pictures really took off because it took that long for most cinemas to become equipped with sound systems. In today's film market, the movie musical, outside of animation, is almost rare. It's hard to believe that the entire film industry took off because of a musical. Chilton walks us through decade by decade, highlighting significant changes in technology that helped to bring us to our new kind of movie musical, like School of Rock and A Star is Born, where characters don't just break into song like a traditional musical, but the music is also a character all its own. To read the whole article, you can check out the link in the description below. You can also find more random ramblings in the print version of our newsletter on our website. That's all for me this week. Thank you all for listening. Don't forget to click subscribe for more content from Exploration. And lastly, between politics and the pandemic, it's been a weird, strange, heartbreaking, and gut-wrenching week. One thing we all have in common is that we're all stressed and we're all tired. So please, Do your best to be kind to each other.